Ja, mena. Tēnā tātou. Ko heko rangi te maunga, ko waiapu te awa, ko Ngāti Prau te iwi, ko Māui te tūpuna. I'm greeting in, uh, you all my traditional language, the indigenous language of Aotearoa, New Zealand, Māori. <laughs> we are a Pacific peoples. Um, I essentially gave you my GPS coordinates, my sacred river, the Waiapu, my sacred mountain, Hukurangi, my sacred ancestor, Māui, the demigod. You might have seen the movie Moana. Well, he's a real-life descendant of Māui. And actually, it was on our sacred mountain that Māui uh, fished up the North Island of New Zealand. So I come from that uh, nation, the nation of Maui. From my ancestors to yours, I want to acknowledge uh, all of you and your ancestors uh, and what you bring here with you in this space. So thank you for being here. Um, you know, climate change brings with it a number of challenges. For us, a thousand years after uh, Maui, uh, Portiki, <laughs> travel travelled to our lands, uh, this is not the original Maui, another one, we face significant uh, degradation of our, our environment. Our river, the Waipu, you know, the mother load, it's our mother, uh, now has one of the highest uh, rates of, of silt in the southern hemisphere. You know, that's a result of, of the deforestation of native forests in our area as a result of government policy and uh, to make way for agriculture and some of these modern day uh, industries that we find ourselves in. So we in the Pacific, uh, and particularly my community and other communities that are isolated, uh, facing climate change uh, impacts which basically uh, are rendering us in a very vulnerable position. We have a lack of infrastructure, so when the great floods come, like what we experienced earlier this year, we are suddenly cut off almost overnight uh, from, the energy, from energy infrastructure. Our bridges are washed out, so um, you know, we, there's no access to the roading network. <laughs> uh, the lights go out, so, you know, we have no access to energy. And of course, food security becomes uh, an issue. So we are looking to ways that we can build the vital infrastructure we need to become climate resilient communities. And nature markets have become, for us, the solution. You all understand and know about nature-based solutions, but you also know if you work in the space that it's extremely expensive. We as a developed nation, even though we're a fourth world nation within a developed nation, um, cannot access climate finance like other Pacific nations can. So we have to actually look at alternative solutions. Uh, and that solution for us is the market. We are developing the world's first indigenous-led, 100% owned nature market. We're not just building out a credit. We're building out a market and a system that's going to be 100% owned and controlled by indigenous communities. We are bundling a combination of biodiversity credits carbon credits, both in the blue and the green. And it's extremely exciting and innovative approach that we're taking because beyond the science, we're actually also combining indigenous knowledge uh, and we have our first offering of credits that will become available next year, uh, as, as soon as next year in April. Why is this important? Because it's going to deliver sustainable finance to our communities, the communities who need it most. Uh, we will be reinvesting the, the uh, profits from our credits back into regeneration of our native forests, cleaning up our rivers, uh, and also you know, creating vital infrastructure and jobs for our local communities. So instead of going to work uh, in the pine industry and clear cutting uh, trees, we'll actually de redeploy our workforce so that um, we are planting new native forests we are bringing back our, our native bird wildlife uh, and also we are working in the ocean space. So conservation, rewilding, bringing back those habitats, biodiversity, biodiversity is actually built into what we call our credit, uh, our credit, sorry, carbon credit plus plus. So it's, we, our credit will be unique in that um, you'll be guaranteed uh, a tonne of carbon but beyond that, you'll know that uh, your investment is going to help 
regenerate biodiversity. We've seen bad approaches to carbon development happening. And so the other aspect is building in heritage elements. We want to make sure that whatever we do promotes uh, indigenous knowledge. So I want to invite you all to, um, to learn more about our conservation project, Hinemoana Halo. And again, I just want to thank you all for being here. Nga mihi. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor. Now, let me take this opportunity to introduce Isaac Bryson from Tanzania to share his experiences from the Yaeda Chini Carbon Project. Hi to everyone. As I have been introduced, my name is Isaac Bryson from Yaeda Valley, as mentioned, in northern Tanzania. But uh, there is a home for hunt and gatherers, the Hazabe, for more than 40,000 years ago. But uh, for decades, also, we have been together uh, hosted by Datoga uh, grazing pastoralist, a pure traditional grazing without any other option. We have been living together friendly with the environment uh, during our hunting, gathering, and the pastoralism. Uh, since our ancestors, it is our custom to live friendly with nature because we depend for hunting and gathering and pastoralism. So this has been uh, a lucky and a grateful opportunity for us because after some times, there was a, a little started invasion of, uh, of, of the strangers, those who were seeking for farming opportunities, and uh, also they were uh, starting this poaching, uh, poaching activities that uh, resulted into shaking our life negatively, especially hunter and gatherers, as well as those pastoralists. And uh, where uh, that is when it provided us the response uh, in order to, to, to solve such uh, a problem. And uh, we, we did a lot of assembly meetings on, on knowing how to, we can solve that situation. And the solution was to develop a land plan uh, to get the, the certificate of ownership of our land so that it can provide us the power to defend our land and to set the bylaw. And this was done in 2009 we were lucky to have the certificate and the legal recognition of our, our own land, and central land, uh, from the government of Tanzania and also the support from the NGO called the UCRT, Ujama Community Resource Team. Uh, and uh, after that, we, we found that we have a foundation now to, to start securing the, the land and all the sources because we have the power. Uh, but in 2010, we were lucky to start the pro, uh, carbon uh, emission offsetting project through our forest after we got awareness from the partnership contract with Carbon Tanzania. I have the boss there called Mark Beck. So we started well the agreement and we, 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 we get awareness that our forest is playing a great role and we involve on voluntary carbon market through our project developer. Uh, for, uh, and we agree after every six months there must be a sell to the voluntary market and the money is coming da back directly to the ground level to us, uh, the community. So we started the project since 2010. So to date, it is 13 years, it's a long period. Uh, since then, I was a project manager from the time up to date. So we have observed this, the project is bringing a lot of benefits to us. Uh, starting with this revenue flow as a monetary benefit, it has helped us in several issues in our community, like education costs. Uh, hundreds of students have been benefiting from through this. As we know, boy and the arrow, we have boy and the arrow, we don't have a cash. So this project has been helpful to, to us. Also, we have, uh, we have been uh, getting support to, to the health services. Uh, as we know, we, we can't afford those expensive treatment in hospitals, ambulances, transport, treatment, serious treatment. So it has been covered by this uh, revenue. Uh, food security for sometimes because of the harsh environmental drought and so on. Uh, sometimes we, we like to have availability of plenty of tubers and what. So during that season, we use this revenue through agreement on meetings. Uh, we use to purchase food and we distribute equal to each individual household. Also, the project have employed 
uh, my youth guys, uh, uh, my fellow there at home, more than 130 guys have been employed as a youth, as a community game rangers who take daily patrol operation to take this, uh, to, to see the security as we have agreed during the land plan, if it is going well or not. If it's going well, no problem. If, it's, uh, if there is any deviation, we are taking the action. So in that sense, it has played a great role. Also developmental projects like building school, uh, dispensaries, and so on. Uh, it has been so helpful. Also, there is non-monetary benefit from the project. Uh, we know that we have started from 2010 up to 13 years. So year after year, the forest have been improving, the density of the forest, the animal has been increasing. So that the hunting and gathering have uh, becoming better and better year after, after year. Even grazing pasture for our fellows now are uh, being available. The spiritual sites, uh, we have different spiritual sites where we used to worship. So it has been well protected. Yeah? And the recognition, yeah? through this project, we have been recognized internationally, even local there at home, uh, that the hazard they have the land. The land is, uh, is playing the role of reducing the emission. And, and the emission is, is, is a global uh, 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 problem. So th this recognition has been uh, a huge opportunity for us uh, to engage uh, with the global on fight uh, against this climatic impact. Yeah, for in general, this project have been uh, so compatible with the, our way of life because in general, uh, uh, cultural lifestyle, hunting and gathering, well supported to date, and uh, we have a secured future to proceed. Yeah, I'm here to take the opportunity <laughs> to appreciate uh, the, the, the work, uh, the great work from the, around the global to recognize the, the, the indigenous people and the local community. And uh, I can assure you that uh, uh, as we are living close to the nature, uh, uh, we are front line to make sure that the nature is secured. The, and we know that nature, we have been getting awareness that nature is the solution for climate impact. So we are forefront on that. But what we request is you, decision maker, international decision maker, and all others, uh, to give us support in solving so many livelihood challenges. Uh, we have so many challenges that sometimes forces us to eat the forest, but unsustainable, unsustainably with a very low financial uh, gain. So, but uh, through this way of uh, high integrated carbon voluntary market, we have seen as the best way because it's very sustainable. Do we prote uh, protect the forest? Then we are getting paid. And then the payment are solving the challenges. And we've seen that this is a very compatible uh, way, uh, project that can help you to, to have a bright future. Uh, living out solving uh, uh, livelihood challenge, we have seen that the project is solving the global challenge that is climate impact mitigation and so on. So this COP28, uh, as before I came here, I have been getting a, a awareness about this COP28 ideas through LinkedIn and so on. Uh, and it has brought a huge hope to us that uh, after this meeting, the real action, the real prompts the issues for several years since the Paris Agreement 2015 to date, it's a several year. It has been like a theory. Uh, it has been a, a lot of agreements, but uh, this COP28 has promised that after here, we are going to see the real action that uh, indigenous people and the local community are being supported for the case of moving forward to the net zero emission target. And the biodiversity protection is our daily, uh, our daily custom. So uh, I'm thankful and I appreciate my presence here and uh, uh, also on behalf of my, of my community there at home and across the world, uh, I, I request your support to proceed so that we can reach our goals. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Isaac, for bringing out those very important issues, uh, security of land tenure, the hospital insurance, livelihoods, among others. So I'll now open the floor to Melena Ponand from Guyana to share her experiences. You have five minutes, Elena. A pleasure. Pleasant afternoon to all. I am Melina Pollard at Tusho, which is also a village leader. I am from a village called Riversview in Guyana, South America. It's a very lovely village filled with peaceful people 
warmth, hospitality. When you come to Guyana, you come for the experience where you stay for the warmth of the people, nature at its best. We are always pleased to have visitors. Riversview got its name from facing three rivers. And it has approximately 1,000 persons living there. The village is covered by about 80% of forests. Our people depend on the forest for their livelihood. We get our food, our clothing, medicine. We get the nourishment for our minds, our bodies, and our souls. And we share this with the entire world. Due to climate change, the weather patterns are no longer predictable. In 2020 and 2021, Riversview experienced the worst flooding ever. And this year, we had severe droughts, which has caused the loss of crops. And for those who would do farming, you know that when you lose one crop, especially in indigenous people's lives, you are losing a lot. Sometimes the money doesn't compensate for what you've lost. Our village received funding from the sale of carbon credits, which we used to develop different aspects of our village. We developed health, education. We developed projects that will improve the lives of women and youths. And for us, this is something that will enable us to reinvest in our village and make it more productive. We have rich flora and fauna, and we encourage the use of the sustainable use of the forest because this is what we depend on and we willingly share it with the world. One of the projects that we did is ecotourism we are starting now where persons get to come and experience the rich forest life. You're able to come and enjoy it with us. And all of these projects that were done, we used the finances from carbon credits to do that. So it's improving lives while saving our forests. And I make this plea to you today. Invest in the forest. This is what is going to save our mother, our mother earth that provides everything that we need. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melena, and for also saving two minutes <laughs> of time. So, uh, and the, the, the issues you raise are quite important. So, I now want to give this opportunity to Nevi from uh, Cambodia, and uh, there will be translation. So, we'll give you um, nine minutes because of the translation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Krung Navi. I'm the um, Bunong indigenous community from Cambodia. ICC, ICVC, um, Nature for Climate, that ban I'm thankful to UNFCCC, IVCV, um, and Nature Plus, sorry, um, Nature for Climate, giving me the opportunity to share our story today. Um, our community lives in the heart of Kao Sema wildlife sanctuary 
in the east of Cambodia. Đan chim rau sạt bầy nè, mận trâm tai chè, miên nay, tai hợp bao nhiêu khiom tè, bận tai vi cứ chè, ắt sinh nhà, nương tâm liêm tâm loa, bao bao chun chun, đam phe tai bùn ong, bao bao nhiêu The forest in the Khao Sai Ma Wildlife Sanctuary is more than a home to us. It represents cultural and traditional to our community. Đan đây nè, ban ở top job tâm niệm tâm nong, yang chất snat chim muôn nương chun khiom, chỉ chăn chim nong nam mộc hải. This land has a strong connection to our community from many generations. Nieng khiom men chum nuot ha. Pralang robot don ta robot yeng khiom nuot khong prey ni. As the enemies, our culture and we believe that spirit is we have strong connection to the spirit in the forest. Dan chum rok sat prey do pi sat mui ni. Dan sat prey chum rok mui ni. Tatoal ban rong kro pi ka kap bom plain prey chen nong rok rien day prey khoch bap. However, this forest is being threatened by like gradually become deforestations. Ote ho chak sdaeng dan chum rok sat prey snul ke chia dom ban sam bo bap tat doi chi vek chum rok. Um, I tell you an example from the uh, next to uh, our home, Snow, former Snow Wildlife Sanctuary. This uh, Snow Wildlife Sanctuary uh, like experience having a rich biodiversity, but it haven't uh, got any support from any other project. Resulting in deforestations and biodiversity loss. For us, Snow Fate. Uh, we consider as uh, the reminder of what happened that uh, the community who trying to protect the forest but do not get any support. When our community uh, is being ignored and there is no any support. So in uh, 2010, our community took a big step by joining Red Plus Project. This, is, this journey is the unknown journey and full of questions and challenges. As the uh, indigenous people woman, I am concerned that when we join this project, uh, we don't, our boy is not being hurt and our boy is not respected. When we strongly engage in the project, our community start um, uh, understands about the benefit of the carbon financing. This project is not uh, only about earning the money, but it also empower us to uh, protect the forest. Protect the forest and the, uh, our customary land rights. This red project helps us to obtain the collective land right uh, where 
like it uh, like goal recognition that we indigenous people own this territory tha yeung khyom chi ma cha dai robas yeung khyom nang thae ra sa dai ni nang thae ra sa ka pia dai ni rohot to kon chao chumnon kraoy and we we have strong commitment to protect this forest for our next generations yeung khyom ko ban pra pra uh, ថាវិការដែលទទួលបានពេលហើយបានប្រទានកាបនយកទៅអភិវឌ្ឍនៅកម្មភាពនានានៅក្នុងសហគមន៍របស់យើងខ្ញុំ <coughs> នាងយើងខ្ញុំបានតម្លងប្រព័ន្ធទឹកស្អាតសម្រាប់ប្រាប់ប្រាស់ក្នុងសហគមន៍នឹងធ្វើការស្គងអណ្ដងស្នាប់
I've been told that because I'm a board member, I should not actually discuss them because it will appear as if I'm endorsing a project. So I'll, I, so I'll, not, I'll not do that. So what I'll do is I'll open the floor because I know you might have a few questions. I'll open the floor for anyone who might have a question or clarification to them and also generally to the people dealing with carbon around here if they may be able to clarify one or two issues you might have. How many hands do I see up so that I know how to manage this? So let's start from, is that clockwise going this way? Left? Yes, sir. Microphone? Thanks. Uh, those all sound like amazing projects. And I, I have a, kind of a specific question is, um, of, of each credit sold, how much, what percentage of that, let's say if, if it's $10 a credit, how much of that reaches the community itself to use? And then kind of complimentary question, if these are kind of high integrity credits with co-benefits, uh, biodiversity, social benefits, et cetera, and if, uh, do you find that they, like, the buyers pay more knowing these stories? And if so, does, uh, does that, that translate to more funds reaching the community if the credits are of higher value? Uh, let me take two more, and then I'll give the panelists the time for an opportunity. Yes, madam. Hi. Thank you so much for sharing the story. Uh, actually, I would like to ask to Navi specifically, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, I just want to know how long it takes you, I mean your community, up to you can go to the market, and then what is the most difficult aspect when you do this REDD project? Is it related to the capacity building or understanding about that? Because you also mentioned about Forest Patrol. So I just want to know what is the most challenge. Thank you. Thank you. And the, the last one for this round. Hi. Thank you. Um, I'd like to know how long the contracts are that you sign for the um, carbon market projects. And if they're longer, if they're, say, 25 to 30 years, how you manage that in terms of thinking about intergenerationally the contracts that you're signing. Thank you. Okay, let me take, take one more, uh, just behind you, and then we continue. So um, thank you so much. I want to comment all of the panelists. Um, I think there are some very successful stories. I am also from Guyana, and I just want to commend our Tusha, Tusha Melina. But I want to share some a little bit more perspective on Guyana situation. Guyana is a um, small country, about 83,000 square miles. Um, it has um, a forest coverage of more than 85% um, percent of the country is covered by forests. Um, and so since 2008, we started the um, initiative of trying to see how best we can able to have finance come into our country. So um, in 2009, we had an agreement with Norway where we were benefited with 250 million US dollars. And only last year, we had another agreement with Hess Corporation where Guyana again benefited from 750 million US dollars. Coming out of that, 15% was designated directly for indigenous communities. Indigenous communities, uh, we hold about 10% um, about of Guyana landmass. And from the project there, we were able to get 15%. Um, um, to date, we have received about 22.5 million for this year. And that's, we will be receiving that among for the next 10 years. Thank you so much. Thank you. In the interest of time, uh, I will not uh, go into the details, but there's the questions of benefit sharing, does it bring more uh, carbon uh, money? Uh, what are the, some of the difficulties we are facing? And wh how, what do you do about the length of the contracts in the terms of intergenerational context? So who wants to go first? OK. Mfupi. Benefit sharing. The revenue sharing. As we know, we indigenous society, we can't afford to have a complete uh, accomplishment of the whole system to have the money. So we have the partnership with uh, some of the project developer. Uh, for example, Carbon Tanzania is a project developer for us. 
then we have the government. The government is watching for both of us, community and the project developer. If those agreements that we have did on contract are going smoothly. So according to our contract there, 60% uh, of the total sale, 60%, six, now, nowadays it's 61, has changed the, just the recently. 61% of the total sale is going directly to us. Then 30% is going to the project developer. Project developer are the ones who are trying to, to connect us from the ground to the global uh, financial system. Monitoring operation of the project, for example, uh, project manager are used to monitor the, the project. So the, the whole cost of operation is being covered by those 30%. Also the verification, as you know, we have the verification uh, organization, for example, Plan Vivo and Vera, but we use Plan Vivo. Uh, Plan Vivo verification, the cost is inside of that 30%. Then 10% is for our government, like taxi and some contribution to those who are close to us, so that when it happens there is any kind of challenge, either uh, illegal invasion or any kind of challenge, we use to call them, to inform them to come to, to solve those problems. So for the great percentage, the amount of the money that are being earned to the voluntary market are coming directly to, to us, and that is 61%. Contract duration. Contract duration uh, for us is now, uh, we uh, at first we were having the contract before the expansion of the project was 20 years. But uh, last year, we agreed that uh, we, we renewed the contract because there were new members joined. So the contract now, it is 30 years. So uh, 30 years is a long period. Maybe I will be <laughs> old. Uh, we, uh, monitoring of the project always involves several meetings. We used to meet several, several, we used to meet in several villages, communities, and we used to talk with people, to talk with the youngs. Nowadays, the youngs are at school, a hundred of them, they're at school. They are getting school uh, uh, through revenue, and even to their head, they know that the revenue is playing a great role. Even when I go home, the food is there. If there is a problem, we buy through this revenue. So even the generation through meetings, through uh, interaction, through monitoring, are getting awareness of, of knowing this uh, project that is valuable to our life. And if this project is gone, I think we can be shaken negatively. I just want to uh, respond to the question about the, the credit and the pricing. Um, so I think that no one's got it right yet. I think there's huge scope for indigenous communities to build out a premium credit, which goes beyond carbon, to look at what we actually have to offer that nobody else does. <laughs> we are the biodiversity owners, 80% of, as we know, for the world's biodiversity as we know it, is either managed or owned by indigenous communities. Uh, and then we know also that uh, indigenous knowledge and keeping them in place, stabilising indigenous peoples on their land, is going to be good for that biodiversity. We have the cultural traditions uh, to be able to protect uh, these very special places. So that should that translates in the market, and we've already been testing this, uh, and we've been offered the higher end uh, of the market spectrum. So in New Zealand, the carbon credit is worth $70. That's quite high. We will be able to go 20% above that. So this is going to probably be one of the highest priced credits uh, to come online. Uh, but 100% of the profits of our credits beyond the admin fee, which was basically running our train exchange platform, the investment side of things, transactions, all go back to our communities. We are the project developers <laughs> as well. So uh, I'm not into the idea of long-term contracts. We are using a very, very different formula. Uh, we are using ex-ante science-based finance. We're, uh, we're taking a seven-generation approach. We are talking about a 100-year asset. We value the carbon credit over a 100-year cycle. Uh, we, front, we encourage investors to provide finance up front, uh, and then over the duration of that time, uh, we will 
provide the investment, you know, the ROI on that original investment bank back. Because ultimately, our concern is about uh, maintaining the self-determination of, of Indigenous communities, protecting the asset long term, ensuring that you don't have what we have now, which is carbon speculators coming in uh, to our communities. So it's about protection, uh, it's about good governance, Indigenous-led, uh, and, and also participation. We want to make sure from ridges to reef, across all those value chains, that Indigenous people are the ones that uh, are benefited, benefiting. Hilda. All right, so in Guyana's case, we've had consultations with the Indigenous peoples and our agreement was for 10 years. So this year, we collected our first sets of funds that went directly into villages. Villages decided on which product, projects they wanted to do. So it's a little different, where each village would have a different priority, but they were able to use their funding to develop their village coming from the bottom up and not somebody at the top saying that this is what you have to do. It came from the people. So for us, that's a plus. We were consulted. And even at the village level, when we were trying to determine the plans that we wanted to do, we looked at it in a 10 year cycle. And then we prioritize it. Because you would notice that in every area, persons would have a different priority. So we had months of going through that, deciding which ones we wanted to do first. And this has benefited our village, not only my own, but all of the villages in Guyana, all of the indigenous peoples. They were able to use the funding to develop their specific village in the area that they choose for the first set of funding. And we're expecting that over the next 10 years that we will be getting more funding that will help to transform villages and the lives of indigenous peoples. Avi? I would like to answer the questions uh, to uh, the lady. Uh, the Red Plus project in Kaosema Wildlife Sanctuary started in 2010, and in 2016, we got the revenue. Uh, ដោយសារតែសហគមន៍ខ្លះស្មើជាក់សហគមន៍ខ្លះគាត់អត់ទាន់យល់ច្បាស់ពីគម្រោងរេតបូកហើយគាត់នៅចង់កាប់ប្រ
but uh, when those people seeing the uh, benefit from Red Plus project, they see uh, the community development activity, and they they see the uh, benefits that we got from the forest, and they gradually involve in the project, and our like our committee will try to uh, do the awareness raising to those uh, member who don't want to join the project, uh, and and then uh, involve them more into the community development uh, discussions. เอ่อเตะตองตะนังปัญหาเตะตองการกรุบกรองทวิกามาจํานวนพวกខ្ញុំនៅមានផលម្បាក់ដោយសារតែពួកខ្ញុំក៏អត់សើចអឺចេះស